back, Principles of Accounting to Students. I wanted to run through a very important concept. We're still in Chapter 16, Week 1 of the semester. And it's something that kind of comes back to haunt you, so I just want to make sure that you have a really good grasp of this. And it's, it's calculating cost of goods sold. Now what I have here, I have the two types of companies. If you remember back in Principles 1, there's actually three. There's your service companies, there's your merchandising companies, and then there's your manufacturing companies. Um, here we're really dealing with just merchandise and manufacturing. If you recall, service companies don't have cost of goods sold, but both merchandise and manufacturing do. The difference between these two companies is merchandise companies purchase junk and then they resell it, whereas manufacturing companies just make junk. Um, essentially, we've got the same formula, though. For both, we have a beginning inventory. I wonder if I can draw this. Let's draw this. We have beginning inventory, which is the stuff that you have lying around your warehouse in the beginning of the day, beginning of the month, actually, or accounting period, however formal you want to get with it. Okay, now here's your big difference. For a merchandising company, they don't make anything, but they buy stuff very easy you know it's I'm gonna buy stuff and I'm gonna resell it you know t-shirts or something um, whereas your manufacturing company we're taking their cost of goods manufactured we deal a lot with manufacturing in this in this book um, but it's essentially the same thing it's just these guys are buying these guys are building your cost of good manufactured those are your materials your labor your overhead that you got to read about wonderful stuff okay so you take the beginning inventory, which is what I had at the beginning of the month, plus all the stuff I either made or purchased, and then what you have is this concept called cost available for sale. This makes sense, all right? I had this, I bought this, so this is what I now have in my, my, um, in my basket of things I have to sell. Okay, well that's great. Um, month rolls around and now if you remember traditionally you know it, we don't really track things as we sell them in the warehouse we, at, least, at least back in the day you didn't, just because you have so much going in so much coming out so at the end of the day you recount your inventory and you say here's what I have left that's what we call your ending inventory at the end of the day or month or accounting period typically month um, tonight I keep saying day for some reason at the end of the month you have the stuff left over so what you have minus what you had left over is what you sold is essentially all we're doing so your cost available for sale these are the materials labor finished goods that i have that i'm able to sell at the end of the month that's your ending inventory you take those away and you end up with what you sold Okay, well that was fun. Is there more? There's more. Of course there's more. I have pictures. So just for those that you know, re really are still struggling with this a little bit, I have a picture of my, my mom's warehouse. Actually, no, this is just something I stole off of YouTube. Or not YouTube, Google. Um, and this is beginning inventory. Right? It's a warehouse that's just full of stuff. Random warehouse. Looks like bread or something. And that's at the beginning of the month. So that's what they had. And they had a good month. And at the end of the month, this is what they have left. This is your ending inventory. So to understand that formula more, what happened to the inventory? Well, yeah, somebody could have stolen it or something. But what happened was somebody, we sold it all. So you take your beginning inventory minus your ending inventory is going to be your good sold. Makes sense. If this is worth a million dollars and this is worth zero, you sold a million dollars worth of inventory. Okay, hopefully that conceptually helps. I can go a little bit further. Ooh, see this? This shouldn't be there. Um, there's your same beginning inventory. But during the month, not only did I have the beginning inventory, but I bought a bunch of stuff. Where did the stuff go? It went into the warehouse. So there's your beginning inventory plus your purchases. As this is, you know, drawn down, I got more coming in. Now I have a tracking mess, right? I have this beginning inventory and I'm buying all this stuff and selling it. And at the end of the month, oh, I still have nothing left. So then what is my sales? My sales, my cost of sales, that would be. My cost of sales is the beginning inventory plus what I bought minus what I have left, which is zero. 
So essentially all this stuff that I either had or bought, I sold. All right, so let's go a little bit further now. This the, I don't know if this is the last slide, but it's the next to the last slide. There's our beginning inventory that we had lying around in the warehouse. And all accounting really is doing is, is taking the physical good and putting a number towards it. That number would be money or dollars. Um, true accountants would say it's not money, but anyway. Okay, so there's your purchases. So, okay, that's what I began with. This is what I bought. Very similar to the last slide. But my ending inventory, oh, I have some left. Now's where the math comes in. And we take, and what, what, what's our sales? Well, our sales, we had this, we purchased this, we have this left. So you take these, you subtract that, and that's what our cost of goods sold is. Hopefully that helps. There we go, here's the summary slide, beginning inventory plus purchases, minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. I hope this helps. You guys have a great week. Take care.